thanks for clicking on the video and as you've just seen in the title I'm going to take you on a tour of this woodland and show you the different shelters that I've been building over the last few years. Now let's start right off right now with this one. Many of you know this, many of you have probably seen the whole build. This was a huge build on, it, on, on YouTube. This is also known as the Viking House. Who built it? Well, I did, along with my good friend Mike. How long did it take, I hear you ask? It took a long time. It took many, many weeks. In fact, it probably took three or four months. You can see there, we've got this lovely cedar construction. Everything, pretty much everything you see right here is all built from wood sourced in this woodland and it's 99% of this is cedar. Looking at it right now, the only bits of this that aren't cedar are probably where the fire pit is. There's those two V notches and that crossbar. They're hazel. I think that's about it for the hazel. The rest of it is all cedar. So the construction, you can see on the back here, we've burnt in the, the bottom ends of these sticks. Well, that's to reduce the amount of moisture being soaked up into the wood. It's an old way of preserving wood. In fact, it's an old way of stopping moisture getting in and rotting that wood. So it kind of preserves the wood. It preserves the shelter for a lot longer than it normally would be if it wasn't already burnt in. Uh, before we go in, let's take a little tour around it. Yes, we have built this little fence. Is it practical? Well, it kind of is. Um, bark wise, the whole roof is made of bark. You know what? That took a long time bark peeling. It really did. Up there, we've got a vent for the roof because after living, or not living, after making a few good fires and sleeping here for a few nights, we realized that it was quite smoky and we needed to get that smoke up and out. So we built, we made a hole in the roof and we built this almost, this kind of chimney cap, I, I like to call it. And then we climbed up and then pinned that to it, pinned it to it. Well, it's kind of half balanced and we've secured it with some cordage as well. Great feature, you know, building these sorts of shelters, it's a matter of trial and error. You realize what works and what doesn't work. And we realized that it needed a hole. That's why we built the hole and the chimney so smoke can go up and go out and stop smoking us out. Moving on to the back here, we've got a nice window. Uh, and again, everything is just bark. We've, we've had a little play with using clay, but because we didn't mix um, like, like straw or, or grass or fibers into it, that clay, it just dried and fell off or dried and cracked and just fell off in the wind and in the rain. So again, we learned from that. Moving on to so the window here, I'll just climb over this fence and you can see this window opens up like that great little feature i love that window again that was just built separately and then it was held on with we we'll just used some cordage to hold that on so climbing back over the fence and let's let's keep going round you can see again the ends of the stakes or the sticks have been burnt in um what else we got lots more bark you know that bark peeling that took a long, long, long time. Would I recommend bark peeling? No, definitely not. But it worked. However, did it really work and how well did it work? You know what? When we built this, the bark was fresh. When we pinned the bark on, it was fresh. And as it's dried, it, it's sort of constricted and it's cracked. That is why when we now go inside, you'll see how many holes there are in the roof. The roof is very, very leaky. When it rains, it drips in here quite a lot. So there you are, you can see all the holes in the roof. Again, we learned from our mistakes. We've never built anything like this at all in the past, but we learned. And I think the way to improve this, you know, if we spent a few more weeks here, we could probably peel enough bark to rebark it. And I think if there's enough layers of bark, even if it does have cracks in it, if there's enough layers, there should be enough coverage in order for that rain to not seep through, but to just roll away off these bark tiles and down onto the ground. So this is it. Let's go inside. We've got a nice fire pit here. We dug the fire, the fire pit out. We put some, we lined it with rocks. Really great feature. And then we've got a bed there. That's Mike's bed. And that's my bed right there. And we've got a few of these little benches. Um, what else do we have in here? So let's just show you that window. 
once again the window opens like this and what we do is we normally have a little stick and that just props in there and it holds the window open I don't know where that stick is right now but not to worry it's only a little quick tour but it really is nice homely comfortable in here you know many many happy memories of, it, well, of being in here really nice we cooked up some great food some of you might remember something that we cooked up which was actually a what we call the lamb copter so sorry about the shaky camera let me just secure my tripod to that there but what am i talking about the lamb copter what do i mean well this is what is left of the lamb copter what we did was we suspended some meat from here which was a leg of lamb we had two fires going two fires in the fire pit and we had this meat suspended between the two fires so what happens is as the heat rises it would then turn this blade which then would turn our meat which was suspended between two fires a great way of cooking That worked really well and we had some really really tasty food that night. I think we had some homemade baked bread as well, which we did over the fire. And I think we had a bottle of mead as well to go with the Viking theme. So there we go, this is the Viking house. So moving on from the Viking house, we're gonna go back to a shelter that I built way before the Viking house. In fact, I think I built the this next shelter about a year, maybe two years before the Viking house. So we're just going over to it now. What is it? Well, it's a lean-to shelter. Uh, lots of, it's a, it's a, it's a lean-to debris shelter. Again, debris shelters, you really wanna come back, every time you come back and add more layers to it. What do I mean? Well, by just grabbing a handful of leaves, sticks, branches, or twigs, and then covering the back of the shelter. It's all about building up those layers so that if and when it does rain, then you don't get too wet. And here we are. Here is the lean-to shelter. You can see a lot of it's fallen off. I don't use this shelter very often. In fact, I think I've only used it twice in the last year. Again, simple construction. Everything you see is all hazel. Sorry, everything you see is all cedar. I'm looking for hazel. I can't see any hazel. There used to be a nice, this is a nice sort of uh, dugout, sunken fire pit. You used to have two V notches with a, a crossbar so you could hang pots and pans. So that is the debris shelter lean-to. Great little shelter, great first project as well in this woodland. And there you can see the back of it. So that is the shelter and a very sorry looking parachute. Again, this shelter has been neglected. Now the shelter you see behind me, many of you have probably even been here or slept in here or slept in these shelters that I'm showing you. This is where I do my bushcraft courses. I'll put a link below, but it's westcountrybushcraft.co.uk. So let's take a little closer look at this giant A-frame shelter. So as I was just saying, this is where we do courses. Right here is where we hang the deer from for deer butchery. We hang the deer from right there. Benches are laid out, sturdy roof, solid A-frame construction. The wood we'd use is cedar wood, which has been sourced from this woodland. We didn't put debris on the roof because debris might be a bit leaky, especially if you have a big corporate event or stag do and so on. So the best thing that we've done is by just putting this giant tarp on and that way, rain or shine, you're gonna be dry. So now as for facilities, what do we have? Well, we have a toilet block right there. They are composting toilets. And another thing that you need is running water. That's right, we've actually got purpose-built running water tap right there with a sink. And this is drinking water. And it comes from just up there, up by the farm. Remember, this is private land. As for hygiene and rehydrating water bottles when it's a hot day, that's exactly what you need in the woodland. Now let's move on to the other camps. If anyone's interested to come along, then please do so. It'd be great to see you here at my bushcraft camp when you'll be able to experience and sleep in and help rebuild some of these shelters. So as we leave those two shelters behind, we're now gonna head down, oh, by the way, this is quite a big private woodland. It's 55 acres in total. So we're now gonna head down this little track and through the pine woodland, which is a mixture of pine and cedar. And then we're gonna pass a little pond. There's a few crayfish in the pond. 
at the moment there's plenty of frogs and tadpoles uh, and there's also a few fish as well but nothing that I'd go catching and cooking up because they're all quite small in fact I think there might be a few goldfish in there so this is the pine and cedar woodland just walking through it some nice big oak trees in here as well let's take a little diversion and go past the pond and you'll see what I'm talking about it's a nice little pond there's a few there's two I think there's two little islands and oh it's got to jump this stream okay jumped I didn't want to risk going over that dodgy bridge because it'd probably crack and give way beneath my feet but this is it this is a small pond which is full of life it really is two little islands and a couple of these wooden pontoons or jetties whatever you call them Oh, my dog just jumped in. You see the ripples. She's gonna need a shower when she gets home. Right. But yeah, lovely little features to have in a woodland. Really is nice to have a, a pond like this. better right so now let's head down to some more recent builds there's one build in particular that I'm going to show you right at the end it's a very ambitious build that I'm building with Mike from TA Outdoors and also what we're going to notice around this part of the camp is that it's been managed so this whole woodlands managed a lot of the trees have been cut down to allow more light to reach the woodland floor and as you can see with the recent storms there have been a few trees that have been blown down and unfortunately we've got two trees well one in particular that's threatening our camp however if it falls it's not going to damage any of our builds which is very lucky just from judging the angle of the lean right now so here we are this is the third shelter that I wanted to show you that right there is another cedar construction well the bark is all cedar but inside it's made up of a hazel frame this one is a native wigwam style shelter we've just pinned the using cedar cordage which is the fibers the inner fibers from the cedar bark we've used that to then bind the the cedar bark to the hazel frame and what's inside it right now well just some firewood this is our firewood storage for the moment so it's all getting nice and seasoned it's been cut down a few months ago it's been in there it's been in there for a while and it's all drying out nicely so it'd be great for when we have a fire next next time we come to the woods finish our big build which I'll show you about in a minute but it's great and there's a nice pile of hay down in there which Amber my dog likes to lie on when myself or myself and Mike are in the woods building so that is the native wigwam style shelter. Again, you can see there's quite a few holes in here. What it needs is just more layers. So we've even been collecting recently more layers to put on top because this shelter, I really would like to get this completely watertight. As I was saying with the Viking house, it's all about adding as many layers as you can in order to reduce the amount of drippage you get inside the shelter. So a little tour inside the shelter. You can see, well, there's my dog there. You can see it's just made up of a big hazel frame and it's been bound all sorts of places 
with cedar bark. And it's also a bit of a storage area. We've got some old rope, a couple of water bottles, and a spade as well, which comes in handy. But that is pretty much it for the Wigwam Native Shelter. That was a great little effort, great construction. Uh, we had a good few meals and camp outs here, which was good. What's she, what's she after? Hey. What is it, Amber? What is it? So, moving on from the Wigwam Shelter, let me show you something that I built a little while back. And it's a chair. Hello. Oh, oh, oh no, you're wet. You're not coming up here. <laughs> that dog's full of energy. So moving on from that and the energetic dog, this is a shelter that I've been building, well, building more like renovating recently. Up until a little while back, there was no tarp on this, which meant that when it rained, all the water would seep through. And sometimes when I'd be sleeping here, well, fortunately it never rained when I slept here, but I knew that if I was to sleep here and it was to rain one day, then I would get rained on, which wouldn't, is never nice when you're out camping. You always want something over you to make sure you're not gonna get dripped on. So what did I do? Well, I removed all of the rotten pieces. Before I did that, I removed all the debris, the dried leaves and sticks and so on, just to reveal the frame. Then I propped it up a few places where it wasn't very, it was a bit wobbly, it wasn't very secure. And then I replaced all the rotten wood. Any wood that was rotten or about to give, I replaced it with fresher wood. And once I replace all the rotten wood with dried wood, strong wood, and if you go back to one of my previous videos, you'll see how I've transformed what was a leaky shelter into now something that is good for blocking out the wind and good for keeping the rain off you. So that is it. That is my second lean-to shelter. In fact, I've built a few lean-to shelters, but they haven't all lasted. I've removed some of them. I've taken some down. I've reused some of the materials. But this is it once again, a great little construction. Yes, you can see, you can see light patches in there, which is the light blue, because I haven't quite finished. Again, as, as I was saying earlier on, it's all about coming back and adding more and more debris to your shelter. What do I mean by adding debris? Well, you can see I've added lots of green leaves to this. And these green leaves and branches, well, they've all come from places like that, which is just a waste product for when they've done lots of clearing here in the woodland, they take the wood off, to be seasoned and sold off as firewood or used for timber or some sort. And then the waste pile, the big pile, I think they normally burn that. So what do I do? I just help myself and I've just been piling them on. It needs lots and lots and lots more layers. So look out for that in a future episode. Another great feature that I really love about this camp is the fire pit. Now let me talk you through it. So this fire pit, again, I've used cedar wood just for the perimeter, for, for the boundary of the fire. If you're gonna make a woodland camp, it is important to have a nice fire pit. And I can highly recommend a big fire pit with a nice border going around it. Why do you want a border? Well, one, it can keep the fire in. And if there's any young kids around or even adults around, they know exactly where to and where not to walk. Another great thing is when you're cooking, you can have things like, you know, meat cooking on a stick. You can just lean that up against this. So it leans over the embers. You can even scoop embers into the corner and then cook food over there while the other fire is roaring away, giving plenty of light at night time. Another great feature that I love about this and why I always build a fire pit like this with a, with a, a hanging setup. What do I mean? Well, you have two V-notches and a crossbar, just like you see there. It means that you can use and make tools like this. What do I use this for? Let me show you. So this is where, well, just over there, that's where I keep my kettle. My kettle just lives here at this camp because the kettle in the camp is really important. What do I use it for? Well, that hooks onto there. It means I can get a fire going and I can then boil water. Once it's boiled, I can use the water and if there's still water left, I can keep it warm by moving it to the side and then keeping that fire going. A great feature, a great project to do even at home in the garden, you know, Anyone can make one of these if you have a nice big enough garden. You make a fire pit like this and make hanging utensils. Not only could you use it for a kettle, but also for a Dutch oven. So that is my little talk on the fire pit. The next thing I want to show you is, in fact, quite, it's quite cool actually, this. So when, you, when, you, when you're sawing wood, it's good to have a saw horse. And that's exactly what this is. 
it means you can lie wood on the top and then you can safely, without having a bad back or, le or kneeling over, you can then saw wood. Why do you need the wood? Well, for firewood or building and so on. So now let's talk about the final project. Many of you have seen the construction. I'm about to show you the round house. That is what we have so far of the round house. We've done about three episodes so far and we've got the roof. Well, we've almost, we're almost ready for the thatch. What do I mean? Well, we're gonna be thatching this roof because we've learned from the previous shelters that you don't wanna to have too many holes in your roof. And I know by thatching this roof, it's definitely gonna be watertight as in no water's gonna seep through onto us. So this is our, our, our entrance right here. We've got a hazel ring up there, which is just gonna hold everything together. This ladder's just there so we can get up and do things. Again, as you can see, it's incomplete. What are we gonna do apart from the thatch? What else are we gonna do to it? Well, we're gonna be adding walls to the side. Thatched hazel walls. They're gonna go all the way around it. So this eventually is gonna be a great shelter. I can't wait to get back here with Mike and finish this one off. Now, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about are these problematic trees. Fortunately, it's still got quite a good foothold in the ground but it's a problem because it's falling right into our camp the only thing it's going to destroy well I can move the sawhorse anything it's going to destroy is probably that chainsaw carved mushroom over there and then there's one other tree which is this one and that's hopefully going to fall away from the lean-to shelter which isn't too bad so I think we're quite lucky with the angle these trees are at and they're not gonna fall onto our nice fresh construction or semi-construction semi uh, being the roundhouse. But it's okay, the forest guys are gonna come in and manage this, they're gonna take it down, remove the wood so we can crack on and finish our camp. Well, that's about it for this video. It was just a little tour to show you around the woodland camp. And once again, if anyone's interested in joining me as well as my fellow instructors down here at this woodland camp, for an afternoon, a day, or even an overnighter of bushcraft activities, please check out the link below. There's dates later on this year. Hopefully I'll see you all then. Until then, I'll be uploading soon. I don't know when, but it'll definitely be another irregular upload. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.